Now, family-owned frame leisure trading says the July 2021 unrest, together with the reduced consumer spending, landed the group into business rescue. The cross-trainer owner requests the company to be placed in business rescue as its finances were hurt by the outbreak of COVID-19 and its key creditors changing payment terms from 90 days to 60 days as well. Business Days Companies and Markets Editor Gabriel Kumalo has more insight on the storm that plunged a cross-trainer into business rescue. Thank you for your time, Gabriel. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you and good afternoon to your listeners at home. All right, Kamala, it sounds like it was just one battle after the other for Cross Trainer. Um, and uh, from 2021 up until now, they just haven't been able uh, to catch a break. Yeah, it has been a cocktail rail of issues, like you said in your introduction. I mean, you don't know where to start because they um, they blame anything from the July 21 unrest, consumer spending, um, to, to COVID-19 as being factors that led to them uh, eventually uh, sort of throwing in their towel, really, and uh, asking uh, for a business rescue process to salvage the, the, the business. It does also sound like actually what was possibly uh, not of a macro condition and really the real internal issue here was a working capital issue with creditors changing payment plans. Um, I imagine that not being able to manage a, a working capital is what ultimately has you decide that you can't go on another day. Yes, but um, the, 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 the creditors would have been informed by the, st the financial state of the company. I mean, um, when creditors usually reduce their a payment period is because they want to reduce their risk, right? So um, uh, that also played a, a, a big factor in curtailing their working capital, like you said. So they could not easily access cash, which also led to them asking for, for, for this uh, process to unfold, the business rescue process. So, of course, we see here that it's voluntary business uh, rescue. Uh, does it change at all the way the business rescue process uh, unfolds? Or was it quite similar to if it had been placed under involuntary business rescue? I think voluntary gives um, a, a business a, a, a greater chance at, 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 at surviving, you know, because it you, you means and it also shows sometimes responsible directorship. To say when you see that you you yourself as a business or directors are not on top of the situation, ask uh, SPES to come in and try to salvage uh, the business. Uh, because once it is involuntary, you lose literally all control of the business. So I think um, a voluntary business rescue has got its own advantages. Also, the article that you wrote, you made mention of Westpac, and I want to I want to wheel it in here because I think it's very it's similar yeah. stories, especially from the size of the business. Uh, Cabello, are we mm -hmm. seeing maybe a trend emerging here from a specific kind of kind of business that mm -hmm. is battling uh, during this macroeconomic time that we're facing? Yeah, I, I think you, you hit the nail on the on the spot, really, because there are a similar company playing uh, more or less in the same retail consumer facing sector. Uh, family owned, um, so it shows maybe the, the benefits of being listed because uh, the listed companies also operate in the same space, but because they have access to to to, to capital markets, it's easier to 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 survive those difficult times. I mean, look at pick and pay recently; they went back to shareholders for a rights issue, which uh, kept them afloat. Uh, but for a private company. You are on your own as the as the as the as the uh, owning family or individuals who own that particular business. So you don't have access to to South Africa's deep uh, uh, capital market. So I think maybe that's one takeaway uh, from from both companies, Westpac and and Cost Trainer, its parent company. It's a very interesting dynamic that you also paint out for us there. Uh, you know, also what we know for sure, Gabalo, is the fact that it's still going to take a while for us to see. Uh, a sustained improvement to the macroeconomic conditions. For instance, inflation is out today. It's uh, heading in the right direction. We're speaking about interest mm -hmm. rates uh, coming up next month. But it's going to take a while for this for you and I to feel that, okay, things mm -hmm. are better. It means that these consumer-facing businesses, uh, you know, might still need more room, more wiggle room uh, to weather an economic storm here. But maybe even, uh, is it possible that we might see more companies uh, buckling uh, uh, while trying to get to this better place? Right. It all boils down to, like, like you alluded to earlier, working mm -hmm. capital. Um, cash is key, right? Uh, if you don't have access to cash uh, and I mean, you, you forget to include also the high interest rates, it means uh, companies of that size 
uh, once they want to access their credit market, the, the finance costs are, are too high for them to stomach. So, uh, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel, like you said, inflation is at a three-year low. We expect interest rates to start coming down. There's a two-part element as well, mm -hmm. which is gonna, uh, uh, you know, infuse a, a few billion rents into into consumers' hands and will help uh, companies such as these consumer-facing companies. So there, there, there are a lot of other factors coming together, which tells you that um, retail companies in the main are set for um, an easier period diet. And if I let you go, I also just want to reflect on business rescue as, I guess, a tool accessible to uh, companies in South Africa here. This is a tool that's been put into legislation that, you know, you can reach for mm -hmm. under really dire circumstances. Are we seeing this tool being used enough? Is it an accessible tool, uh, you know, for many businesses? I mean, if I think of a, country, a company like the one we're speaking of today or a Westpac, for instance, there might be room for you to reach out to a group of lawyers or a consulting firm to bring this on. But other businesses, smaller, more vulnerable, is this a tool that's working well? It is readily available, but um, uh, like we have seen with sm most small companies, they don't necessarily know where to go when they face a cash crunch and they can see that uh, the, the drain is coming. So I think it's a matter of education, but it is a useful tool, like I said. I mean, we had SAA a few years ago, which was in business rescue. It survived that business rescue. It came out on the other hand. So business rescue is not the end of it all. Uh, in fact, it gives a chance, a company a chance to right the wrongs that are there. But some people don't shy away from business rescue because it might reveal some misappropriation of funds. Uh -huh. And so it's, 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 it's a, it becomes an intrusive tool for, for rogue directors. But if you know that you are playing by the book, you are just an... Um, a victim of the macroeconomics. Uh, it's, it's a useful tool for any company to consider, and the earlier the better. Oh, certainly great chatting. I think I'm going to reflecting on this one. Thank you for your time today. Always a pleasure having you here on Business Lunch. That was Gabalo Kumalo. He's Companies and Markets Editor for Business Day.